what has been the worst year in the history of the WWE or slash WWF? What has been the worst year as far as quality of product, entertainment value, just the general just company as a whole? What has been the worst year? There's been plenty of bad ones over the journey. I mean, off the top of my head, I, I have nothing written down for this. This is off the top of my head. I'm going to recite to you years which I look back on and look at as bad years. 1993, definitely. 1995, that's one of the most popular ones. Which other years do you want to look at? 2004, that wasn't a good year. Granted, it wasn't as bad as some of these other ones, but 2004 wasn't a very good year. 2006 and 2007, creatively, were abominations. And 2007 especially, with the whole Benoit thing, that year wasn't very good. 2008 was very good. And then 2009, with the raw celebrity hosts. Ugh. 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 2009 was so just... I don't know. 2010 was just G-rated as hell. Cena and the Nexus. Uh, which other years? 2015, that was a really bad year. 2017 was pretty... Eh. 2018 was god-awful. 2019 was god-awful. 2020's been god-awful. So that's the kind of base crux synopsis of the main terrible years in this company. And in this video, what I'll be doing is deciding in, like, in front of you guys which one I think is the worst. Now, I don't have it decided in my mind right now which one is the absolute worst. I'm going to decide, think out loud on video for you guys, and you're going to get to hear which like my thoughts and which one I think is the worst year of all time. So, without further ado, I guess I'll start with 1993. Now, 93 was a weird year. It really was. You're coming off an era, as Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels talked about in their like Greatest Rivalries documentary, Sit Down Interview with Jim Ross, where they're talking about how the quote-unquote old dinosaurs of the Hogan era are being phased out. The, the whole cartoon characters, your big six foot eight giants screaming at the camera and just flexing and posing at the end of the show. That whole era is going away. But this is WWE, so they're inept at really changing things like outright. So you've got this kind of era where Bret Hart is the emerging baby face, the emerging guy who's going to take over the reins, and you've got Yokozuna in that. And instead of giving Bret Hart the championship and having him have his big moment at WrestleMania 9, Instead, you have Bret Hart lose, Hulk Hogan comes in, beats the, the big heel champion, the dominant heel champion. Hogan beats him in 20 seconds, which imagine if wrestling Twitter was around today. Imagine the toxicity for that decision. So, Hogan beats the top heel in 20 seconds of WrestleMania. Then, you've got a whole year of literally Lex Luger being built as the born-again Hulk Hogan. You've got terrible pay-per-view after terrible pay-per-view. WrestleMania 9 is looked back upon as the worst WrestleMania ever. The 93 Survivor Series was just... Oh, that show is hard to watch. That show is not good. SummerSlam 93 was alright. King of the Ring 93 is remembered for Lex Luger versus... Not Lex Luger. What am I talking about? Mr. Perfect versus Bret Hart. Like, 93 as a year was just so just... Eh. It was whatever. 93 was just not good at all. So there's 93, then there's 1995. 1995, holy hell. Where do you begin with 1995? This one also gave us one of the worst WrestleManias ever, WrestleMania 11. The other WrestleMania that people have looked back upon for decades now is one of the co-worst manias ever. So this gave us WrestleMania 11, but really what this showed us was how out of touch the WWE is with WCW starting Nitro in, I believe it was 94. Nitro started, or it was 95. Well, whenever Nitro started, the whole point is that Nitro, WCW, they're coming in. They've got this bunch of momentum. Everyone's interested in WCW. Their product's fresh, cool, interesting. And WWE, meanwhile, have got like a 600-pound man who can barely move as the top star, a.k.a. Mabel, a.k.a. King Mabel. Like... The whole product was just not good. You had Diesel with this, like, year-long reign. You had... Like, what even happened in 1995? There was just a bunch of media, like, like shows. In your house shows were all right. But none of the big pay-per-views in 1995 were at all good. The like, Raw was just insufferable in 1995. All the characters. That was the era of the goon, the repo man. All these cringe Duke the Dumpster Drowsy. Drowsy, drowsy, whatever. All these cringe characters. 1995 was... That's going to be hard to beat as far as the worst year ever. Then, 
2004, I'm not, this was not the worst year ever by any means, I just want to touch on it, but SmackDown, Raw, the brand split, 2002, 2003, the brand split was like epic, it was like awesome, then you get to 2004, SmackDown is brutal to watch, SmackDown is what, Undertaker vs. Heidenreich, you've got, what even was SmackDown in 2004, it was JBL vs. Eddie Guerrero for like four months, and... Booker T was there. That was the smack. That was literally SmackDown. Undertaker, Eddie, JBL, and um, Booker T. Like it was such a just a poor, poor quality of product. It really was. SmackDown was awful. Raw, Monday Night Raw in 2004 was literally Benoit won the title and then lost it to Orton, and then Orton was such a failure that they had to give the title back to Triple H, and then Batista came in to save them in 2005. That was 2004 on Monday Night Raw. 2004. What even happened? That was that was Orton having his feud with Foley, which is good. And the undercard in 2004 was so not memorable, it's not funny. I mean, I guess that was Jericho versus Christian and whatnot. But yeah, 2004 wasn't great, but it's nowhere near as bad as 93. And definitely not as bad as 95. So currently, 95 is the worst year ever. So moving on, 2006. This was a year you had Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon versus Shawn Michaels and God at a pay-per-view. Yeah. This was the creative direction at the time. Uh, just imagine the creative meeting. Vince McMahon sits down in front of his 44 writing staff and all his stooges, Michael P.S. Hayes, Mark Carano, all these guys. Vince sits down and says, oh, well, uh, uh, we're, we're going to do a backlash. Uh, you know what? <sighs> yeah, we're going to have me and my son Shane versus God. Oh, God, yeah. Like, that's genuinely the creative process in that. So, 2006, the Spirit Squad vs. DX every week for, like, eight months. You had, what What even was 2006? Rey Mysterio was champion because Eddie died a few months before and they were paying tribute to him. You had King Booker. Um, Kurt Angle was the wrestling machine before he left for TNA. 2006 just wasn't a good year. It really wasn't. So, that's 06. 07 was really bad. Like, 07, I'd put up there. Like, really, was 07 worse than 95? No, because you had more star power in 07. But when you look at 07 for the Benoit tragedy, the suspensions due to the, like, the drug, um, or the drug policy violations and whatnot, so you had half the, the main event is suspended. Like, Mr. Kennedy got suspended before he even got to cash in. You had, I believe, Randy got suspended. A bunch of these kind of upper echelon guys. Triple H got injured. You had a bunch of injuries. Undertaker was out for a bunch of that year. I think that was the year Cena tore his, like, peck and, or shoulder off the boat, whatever Cena did. Okay, you had a bunch of just chaos in 2007, despite the fact that in 2007, they produced a good Survivor Series show, and the rest of their pay-per-views was, just wasn't great. It was Bobby Lashley, Umaga, that was 2007, it was Donald Trump versus Vince McMahon. 2007 was, uh, I'd say at the moment, as far as my years, 95 is the worst, then I put 2007 as a close second, and 93 just next to that. So that's where we're at now. Then we get 2009. 2009, really, when you look at it, what did 2009 give us? It gave us Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, and it gave us Chris Jericho, Rey Mysterio, CM Punk, Jeff Hardy. Uh, that's about it, to be quite honest. I mean, DX had their th another reunion, which was a complete just childish failure. It was too G-rated, it was corny, it was campy, it was cringe. I mean, what else happened in 2009? Cena, Orton, every pay-per-view. Literally, Cena and Orton traded the title back and forth just to bolster how many reigns they had. So that was Cena, Orton. You had, God, what else? The Raw Celebrity Hosts? Oh, it was awful. If they did that nowadays, I'd be so pissed off. The Raw Guest Hosts? And this was 11 years ago. Jesus Christ. So 2009, I'm going to say, is on par with 2007. Just by the awful years, 2009 was so, so bad. It just really was. So then you get 2010, which was... Ugh, was 2010 worse than 2009? They're all just as bad as each other. 2010 with Cena versus the Nexus, which I'm going to once again have a mini tirade on the Nexus. The Nexus was such a stupid idea. You bring in this NXT show, which is a carny just mess, and you have all these guys who, outside of Brian Danielson from ROH, no one really knows. They're just a bunch of nobodies... So you bring them in and have them beat up Cena, Orton, Vince McMahon, Bret Hart, Edge, Jericho, Sheamus, Triple H, Undertaker, everyone. These nobodies are beating up the established main eventers. And then Cena just beat them all. It just, it made no sense. 
The Nexus was just a, a waste. This was the anonymous Raw general manager, heel Michael Cole. Just awful, awful stuff. So at the moment, oh, I guess I'm going to put 2010. Oh, this is so tough, guys, because all these years are so bad. Trying to differentiate terrible years is so tough. But 95 was just such a dark period for the company. At least 2010 had some good stuff. I don't know. 2010 was so hard to watch. So then we get a few good, or good, surfaceable years. 2011, 2012, 13, 14. And then we hit 2015. 2015 was a year which, when I look back on it, what was 2015? It was primarily Seth Rollins and the authority cutting heel authority promos every week. Corporate Kane. We had that at this period. Um, Seth Rollins versus Cena was good. You had Sting come out of retirement and have his match with Triple H, which should have been versus The Undertaker, but anyway. And you had Sting nearly you know, die at Clash of Champions versus Rollins. I mean, 2015 was an all right year. Uh, actually, what? Well, no, it really wasn't. 2015 was just a hard year to watch on Raw. I mean, there was a lot of stupid stuff on Raw. Raw was really bad in 2015. Roman Reigns, that was the first year of Reigns' big time push. And it just was not good. So 2015, I'm mentioning there. Where does that rank? I think 2015 wasn't as bad as 2009, 2010, or 95, but it's just up there. Then we have 2018. 2018, where do you begin with 2018? Seriously, where do you begin with 2018? I honestly don't know. 2018 was a year where it was the fourth year of the Roman agenda, and people were just so done. People didn't care, and... It's, it was just a disaster. Reigns vs. Brock main eventing WrestleMania. Like, they, they stuffed up Shinsuke Nakamura vs. AJ Styles. They made a Nakamura Styles feud all about them punching each other in the crotch. That was Styles Nakamura. You had SmackDown just being unwatchable. SmackDown was just so, so bad. Carmella is women's champion. What, what even was SmackDown? Like, that disappointing Styles Nakamura feud. Monday Night Raw was producing some of the worst shows ever. Sami Zayn, Bobby Lashley, and the Three Sisters. Ugh. Ugh. Sami Zayn, Lashley, the Three Sisters. Where do you begin? And it's just Jinder Mahal getting a push on Raw, coming off of a 2017 where he was the top guy on SmackDown. So you had Reigns versus Mahal for, like, two pay-per-views. You had the Saudi shows come into effect. I mean, Greatest Royal Rumble wasn't a bad show, but Crown Jewel 2018... Back when you had Shawn Michaels come out of retirement only to wrestle a 30-minute match against the Brothers of Destruction where Triple H tears his peck in the first four minutes. Oh, it's just a disaster. 2018, November 26, 2018, that Raw show. Ambrose getting an injection up his buttocks. Like, ugh. Drake Maverick, AOPP. So I'm mentioning all this stuff. It was so bad. Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss. Nia Jax versus Ronda Rousey. Nia Jax is a dominant woman in the show. I think 2018 is the worst ever, honestly. Until we see a full year of 2020, I mean, just, you can't get worse than 2018, I'm sorry. 2018 is worse than 1995, in my opinion. So 2018 is currently the worst year in the history of the company. Then you get 2019. 2019, purely because of what they gave us from January through WrestleMania with the Kofi Kingston stuff, the Becky Lynch stuff, and the Seth Rollins stuff, purely on that alone, and the Shield stuff, I'm saying that 2019 was not the worst year ever. Now, granted, after WrestleMania, they did a lot of bad. Undertaker vs. Goldberg. The Fiend vs. Seth Rollins inside Hell in a Cell. Oh, my God. The Fiend vs. Rollins in the Cell. Oh, I'm going to have plenty of rants about that later this year. I can't wait to just rip that. I've pretty much not mentioned that at all on my channel, but that was so, so bad. The Fiend and Rollins. Oh, my God. But yeah, the NXT Invasion, it was a bit of a mess, but it was still fun. And you had, yeah, like, 2019 was just kind of boring. That's the best word for 2019. It was so lackluster. Yeah, like, I did my 2019 year in review video, which has got a bunch of views. But, like, it wasn't a, like, a horrible, horrible year. It didn't give us as much nauseatingly bad stuff as 2018. It was just kind of a dull year. And then now you have 2020 with this pandemic situation, no crowds. It's been just so hard to watch. 2020 has been so hard to watch. So I'm going to say, to conclude, the worst years in WWF history, I'm going to put in this order. The worst year in the history of the company was 2018. That was just the worst year ever, in my opinion. They had the worst Raw shows I've ever seen. Had the, the Saudi shows came into effect. There was the Roman Reigns agenda, nauseatingly bad in its fourth year. You had Jinder Mahal being pushed on Raw. 
as I, I mentioned all this stuff just then. So no, the worst year ever, in my opinion, 2018. Secondly, I'm going to say 1995. I think 1995 is just absurdly horrible. Then I'm going to have literally a three-way tie, or actually no, I'm going to have a four-way tie between, or, or a five-way tie. No, I'm going to go a four-way tie between the following years, 2007, 2009, 2010, and 2019. I'm not going to count 2020 so far, but at this rate, it's going to be right where 2019 is. So I'm assuming 2020 is on this tier. But yeah, just some horrible, horrible stuff. So that's a four-way tie, and the rest of them are just a tiny bit better. So yeah, 1993, 2006, 2004, 2015, all of these years are just a bit better than the, the four on this tier. So that's been the video. I hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and sub. This has been me going over the worst years in the history of the WWE. So if you've enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and sub. Because on the drill, see ya.